Good afternoon and welcome to the Money Desk. I'm Heidi Jockos. Now, a relatively new discipline, neuroeconomics, could hold the key to understanding how and why investors make certain decisions and how to make the right ones. For more on this, let's bring in Roger Eskenazi, who's the managing partner at Tickmill. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Roger. We do appreciate it. Just in short, how would you define neuroeconomics? Yeah, good evening, and uh, thank you for inviting me on the show. Uh, good evening to all the viewers as well. So, so neuroeconomics is, a, is an emerging field of study which kind of intersects three various disciplines, which is neuroscience, psychology, and economics. And it basically tries to equip us to understand why we make the decisions we do or why we don't, and helps us to understand ourselves better so we can make more intelligent decisions in the future. Mm. Now, to be a trader, especially in current volatile market conditions, it can be very distressing and emotional, but some will just adapt to it. Is this where neuroeconomics comes into play? Well, I think like everything else in life, you know, some people just generally adapt to situations or make better decisions because they have a, a better framework of decision-making. Um, and your economics, which is uh, pretty much like artificial intelligence, um, is, a, is a new field that's growing and it's, it's exciting and it's uh, something we need to utilize to help us make better decisions and understand um, what separates a bad decision from a good decision. And the, often, the, the, often the common denominator is, is emotions. Now, when it comes to investments, uh, you know, making decisions based on emotions is the antithesis. This is what you completely, you know, you want to avoid. The three big ones are, you know, of fear, making decisions based on fear, making decisions based on greed, and making decisions based on worry. Um, and, and that leads us to a whole lot of biases that in ourselves that we need to understand. Absolutely. And to buy or to sell, uh, these can be in split second or can be split second decisions. Do you think current uncertainty, both locally and globally, is making these decisions more and more tricky? Yeah, I mean, investing is not a, it's a, it's a zero sum game because, you know, if someone's right and someone's wrong. Uh, so depending on which side of the coin you're on, um, you make split second decisions and you make it based on a certain data set or a perspective, or you make it based on your own view of the world. You know, there's very good sayings, we don't see things as they are, we tend to see them as we want to see them. And that's one of the biases that, that we speak about around becoming more conscious of your cognitive decisions when making decisions when it comes to investments. Mm. Now, fear, greed, and impulsivity are some of the factors at play. How could one use these existing feelings to your advantage in the market environment? So, so let's talk about kind of the, the big five. We speak about the big five. So the, the, the big five things you need to be aware of, just the fact that you're aware of them already sets you on a different level to people who don't have an understanding of it. Um, so, so the first one is a kind of a... The, the loss aversion, the fear of loss aversion. And this is a, a disproportionate worry about losses versus gains. You know, the guys who are just terrified to lose. And uh, we all know that the pain of losing a million rand is a hundred times more amplified than the pleasure of winning a million rand or, or, or gaining a million rand. So one's got to be conscious of the equilibrium in the emotions. Um, and, when you have this loss aversion, it, it, it tends to lead to kind of a paralysis and inertia where that leads then to a disposition effect where you tend to sell the winning positions and you hold on to the losing positions because you have an anchorage in your mind mm -hmm. as to what the losing positions are worth. Uh, and that can be very dangerous. Um, and that leads to the second one, which is anchoring. You know, your over-reliance, an anchor of, of an over-reliance of one piece of information or one piece of data or, more importantly, one belief that your view is right. And you may perpetuate this belief long after the price has dropped and the horse has bolted and you still have that belief. And one needs to be conscious that uh, your belief is not only the belief in the market, and it may be wrong, and it may be the time to cut the, maybe time to cut the position. 
Mm. The third one is the herd mentality. Now, this is the big one which has caused many uh, uh, market crashes and bubbles. And, you know, this is this is a notion that the groups have a more robust collective wisdom and are able to make better decisions than you are. So they, they must be right. I, you know, they're all pl climbing and they must be right. They must know more than what I know. Uh, let me go with them. And on the, on the flip side is, if I go down, at least I'm not going down alone. Uh, and, and we know that this is a result of the Tannenbaum, the Sid Madoff, the Stillian's uh, fellow, this, uh, this guy that took 1.7 billion. And the last two are overconfidence, being overconfident in your own abilities and the ability to execute at the right time. And overconfidence often leads to one thing, which is excessive risk taking. And the last one is confirmation bias, where it's a term in cognitive psychology where it describes that people will always naturally gravitate to information that confirms their existing beliefs, no matter what everyone else says. So they'll ignore other perspectives and their opinion is right. And if you live in, if you live in a dual household, this might manifest in a conversation around how to load the dishwasher. But, uh, yeah, one's got to be very careful of these five biases and try and mitigate as much as you can against that. Absolutely, because I think even losing 100 rand quite, can be quite an emotional uh, moment for you. Thank you so much for those insights. We do appreciate it. That was Roger Eskenazi, who is the managing partner at...